today's video, we're going to be looking at bond energies. So bond energies appear at the end of topic five in chemistry, when we're looking at energy changes overall. Um, they appear at the end and they are generally higher tier questions. They're worth between three and five marks, but I would encourage anyone to have a go because they are easy marks once you've got used to it and once you've practiced it to be able to gain. So before we go on to just going through bond energies now, please make sure you have a calculator handy. And in the next part of the video, I'm just going to quickly recap energy changes so far in terms of exo and endothermic reactions, because if you fully understand those, it makes bond energy so much easier. Okay, so let's have a little recap now, and then we'll be able to try some bond energies ourselves. Before we get going with looking at bond energy, we just need to revisit our energy changes so far. So, so far you've looked at two types of reactions. You've looked at an exothermic reaction, and this one is um, a, shows a temperature increase. So that's your first one. The second one that you've looked at is an endothermic. This one shows a temperature decrease. These are our telltale signs of how to identify um, a particular reaction. Is looking at the temperature, has it gone up, has it gone down? And that's why the required practical focus around temperature changes. Now, if it helps you just to start grasping this concept, exothermic, if we have a temperature increase, we can often feel that that reaction is getting hot because that is that energy moving from the reaction into the surroundings. That's what temperature is. Temperature is energy moving. And if it's moving into the surroundings, so you can feel it resonating sort of through your hands, we know that that reaction is exothermic. An endothermic reaction, we will notice, will get colder. Because it's got that temperature decrease, what it's doing is taking that energy from the surroundings, which might be in your hands, for example, takes the energy from the surroundings and pulls it into the reaction for that to take place. So we often feel it getting cold because energy is moving into the reaction. So hot and cold is an easy way to identify them. Just to be clear, it is not the terminology we should be using in the exams. It is just our easy telltale sign. Our correct terminology would be temperature increase or temperature decrease. Talking about with exo, energy being released into the surroundings and endo, energy being absorbed from the surroundings. So we've got these two concepts to start with. Now, whenever we have a reaction taking place, there are bonds that are broken. Our reaction bonds are broken apart to get just our elements. And then the products are made. We have new bonds there being made. And that's what bond energy looks at. So I'm going to give you a word and I want you to try and remember this word because it's really, really, really helpful. It's bendomex. Now, I appreciate to begin with that won't make much sense, but I'm going to talk you through it, so don't worry. So this just reminds me that bonds being broken to start with, those are our reactants, they're being broken apart, is endothermic. OK, so it requires energy from the surroundings. So breaking bonds is endothermic. It requires that energy in and then when we have new bonds um, being made, or if we make new bonds, that is exothermic, that releases energy. So when we're thinking about a reaction taking place, whenever you have reactants forming products, a general reaction, we know that our reactants, we always need to break the products, break the, the bonds, and then our products are always made. So we have a little bit of endo and a little bit of exo in every reaction. So when we're talking about an overall reaction, being endo or exo, it's looking at the overall energy change. So where is there more energy? That will determine whether it is an exo or endo. So for example, if I have more energy in the products, then that energy is going to be released to the surroundings. Okay, so that one will be, for example, maybe exo. So that's the concept that we're using. So if you need to pause for a minute, take a minute and review that, please do. But then we're going to go straight into trying a calculation because this is the best thing for you to do. So I'm just going to scroll up here and I have a calculation ready. Now the calculations are always really helpful because they give you a drawing. Now that is so, so, so helpful. 
you're never expected to know exactly how to draw everything in the reaction. Some of them they might challenge you because uh, they do expect you to know your ionic and your covalent compounds. But generally they have it drawn because they want to try and make it as simple as possible. So this is our equation. And then bond energies is what we're calculating. Now they will always give you these bond energies. You never have to remember these, so don't worry. So you're just looking at the value of this half of the reaction compared to this half of the reaction. So every single bond in here has a value, which you can find here. And we're going to figure out the values of the two sides. I'm going to take the reactants, take away the products. So for example, we're going to start with this one here. So I can see I have a carbon to hydrogen bond here. Now the helpful thing I would say to do is to eliminate the bonds as you calculate them. So I've got one, two, three, four of these bonds. So these bonds are worth four, one, two. So I've got four, one, two times by four. So that, using your calculator, 1, 6, 4, 8. Remember, you can use calculator in any science exam. So don't try and do this off the top of your head. You want to minimise any chance of making a mistake. The next thing I have is this one. So I've got an O, double bond O. I know that that's worth 4, 9, 6. But look, we've got a 2 here. Now you can either just multiply this by 2, but what I like to do is I will often get rid of that too and I'll draw it out again to make sure that I can show I've eliminated both bonds. That helps me to make sure when I'm checking my answers that I've not made any mistakes. So we've got two lots of these, that's 992. Nine, if I add this to this, it will give me 2640. Oh, and I've done this all in a calculator, okay? So my reactants require this much energy to break those bonds. Okay, that's what it's telling me. So then I'm gonna draw a line and I'm gonna do the same for my products. So here I'm starting, I've got C double bond O. It doesn't matter if it's O double bond C or C double bond O, it doesn't matter which way you read it, it's still the exact same bond. It's still a carbon attached to an oxygen. Okay, so don't let that confuse you. That is worth 803. And again, I've got one, two of those. So I've got 803 times 2. On my calculator that's 1606. Then I've got my last one and again I've got a 2 here so what I'm going to do is I will just draw it out because I find that the easiest way to make sure I've not made a single mistake there. I can guarantee myself these marks. So I've got a H bond O. Remember can be an O bond H, doesn't matter what way round it is at all, but just for the sake of making things clearer, I'm going to do that. So I've got four, six, three, because that's what it's worth, and I've got one, two, three, four of those. Okay, so that on my calculator equals one, eight, five, two. So I'm going to add these two together because this is my whole product side. My products equals three, four, five, eight. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is my reactants take away my products, and you always do it this way. Okay, so I'm doing two, six, four, oh, take away three, four, five, eight, and my answer is minus. 818. Eight. Okay, and that's kilojoules, so that's our, our quantity of energy per mole, so slash mole. Okay, so it takes um, minus 818 kilojoules per mole for this reaction to take place. Now, because that's negative, and because I can see that my products release more energy, I know that that energy there from those products being made is not needed so that is relation to the surroundings so i can tell that this reaction is exothermic and in the question it mentions about it being combustion which is essentially burning of a fuel and we know that releases energy so we are spot on we can guarantee we've got these marks 
have a little go at one yourself.